You know, I was giving careful consideration to not doing a book haul this month because, well, I spent all my, uh, you know, my funny money this month on uh, trinkets for the new car. So I wasn't really buying any books, but you guys continue to be amazing and sent me some stuff. So uh, let's take a look at that now. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another book haul, this time for January of 2021, a little later in the month than I usually like to do these things, but hey, you know, sometimes these things just will happen. So better late than never, guys. So we're gonna do like usual, we're gonna kind of talk about digital books first. You know, I don't have my Kindle with me, I left it downstairs, so you guys are just gonna have to believe that I have one. I mean, I have like 18 Kindle videos in the channel, so I'm pretty sure you know I do have a Kindle, but hey, digital books, I like to say, do count, and I did get a couple this month. Now, uh, two of these are actually review copies, so uh, I'm just gonna kind of, you know, flex that I got a review copy, which even though it's like the dumbest thing to flex about in the world, but here we are. Uh, Kingdoms of Death, that is the new book in the Sun Eater Saga by Chris Verrocchio. That's one I really am. Uh, wanted to go ahead and start, but there's like so many people on the Discord that I want to read along with and experience that with because I've made them huge fans and I think uh, that we're all really excited about that. So I actually waited a little bit. So I'm actually not reading their view copy a little earlier. And I think I think Christopher, I've talked to him, he, he seems to be okay with that decision. Uh, another one is just The Justice of Kings, uh, I got that one from Orbit Books. That's a new one by Richard Swan, his debut under Orbit. And I've already kind of talked about it briefly on the channel and that uh, I thought it was a really kick-ass debut for an author. And uh, I'm going to be doing a full review for that right before the release. I think it's February 22nd is the release. So uh, look for it on the, the week of release. I'll be putting out my review for that one. And then I one that I just kind of actually... When I talked to my classics that I want to read video, I knew that I wanted to get back into reading the uh, the, the Barsoom series by Edgar Rice Burroughs. That's John Carter of Mars. And uh, yeah, yeah, so I went ahead and picked this up on digital because I already have the physical copy, but that only has five stories in it. So I saw this omnibus and I said, hey, you know, that's all the stories. And you know what? If I want to read it in bed or on the run at work, something like that, I can do that. And I have. So <laughs> I've actually started actually reading a, a Princess of Mars again, the first time since I was 16, and I'm enjoying it very much. So that was just kind of like an impulse thing where I was like, hey, that's something really cool I'd like to pick up because I did talk about the uh, the movie and stuff like that recently, and that I think it's a really underrated movie. And it's a really underrated series that I don't think enough people talk about. So uh, I am very much looking forward to, to getting back into that universe and seeing what is up with John and Deja and all the all the cool kids on uh, on Mars. You know, it's a good series to get into. So let's go ahead, uh, guys. Like I said, physical. I spent I spent all my my money on on car trinkets this month. I did. If you didn't watch that video that I made for it, I showed that I I, I spent all my my funny money, like I call it this month, on car stuff. So I couldn't justify any book purchases this month. But uh, uh, again, you guys continue to be amazing to me. So we're going to kind of look at a few of those now. I like to start off with uh, the stuff that some indie authors have sent to me. This one is from Christopher Fly. It's called By the Goddess Ears. Goddesses. You got by, sorry. By the Gods' Ears. Gods'. Gods'. Now, I, I admit I don't know anything about these series, guys, but I, I do encourage, like I've told, uh, every single month I'll say this, I encourage independent authors or self-published authors to chase your dreams and go for it. So I have no problems if they want to send those to me. I will drop links below to all these if you guys want to check them out and get a little bit more of an idea of what they're about because I'm not really sure. This one is called Stringers. It is by uh, Chris Panettier. Panettier? Not really sure. Uh, I know he's a Texas guy, so uh, I feel like we got some blood there. And uh, I think that he draws heavy metal album covers. So that's a, that's a really cool idea. Uh, as far as what the book of knowledge can get a man killed, especially when he has no idea what it means. And this one uh, does not drop until April of this year. So uh, very cool. And last up, I have one called The Mad Trinkets, The Mad Trinkets by Christopher Scott Kirk. Now, the cool thing about this is it was actually sent to me by the owner of, uh, what is it called? The the Mage's Lantern, Matthew from the Mage's Lantern. Really cool. This card, he had a really cool letter and stuff like that. Just one that he said, you know, he watched some of my horror stuff and he thinks this is a horror novel that I would like to try. So uh, of all these that I got this month, that's probably the one that maybe I might find time to try to slip into October if I get, uh, you know, some extra time. I do have some horror stuff I want to read this October, but, uh, you know, always looking for more horror because I feel like that's the, the big untapped resource out there for me is because I do love me some horror, but I, you you know, it's it's really hit or miss on what's going to work for me. And uh, getting this one recommended by someone who's actually watched the content and thinks this is something I might like, well, that's a good way to get my attention. Uh, next up, Matthew is determined. He's determined to get me interested 
in the new Star Wars canon. He sent me Thrawn last month by Timothy Zavon. This time I got the, uh, what is it, the Light of the Jedi from the Star Wars High Republic series that is pretty popular right now amongst people who are still reading the new Star Wars canon. Um, yeah, I'm never going to lie to you. I'm always going to be EU guy. I'm a touch more receptive to this uh, when it's Timothy's on, but this one, I, like I said, I've gotten a lot of people saying, ah, I think that you might actually like that one quite a bit. So uh, definitely never anything I'm just going to kind of scoff at and say forget about it. Uh, I think I'm past that point with, with the Disney Star Wars stuff. But uh, yeah, uh, Matthew, I admire your persistence, my man. It is very, very courageous of you. And uh, I do appreciate you sending me both those hardcovers. It's really, really great. And nothing I love more than adding more Star Wars stuff to my home library. This one is called The Ninth Rain by Jen Williams. It was sent to me by uh, Brittany, uh, who, who actually, she made her debut on my Discord and then she didn't say anything. But hey, I'm really glad that she sent this to me. But uh, we are we are pals on Instagram and I think that we kind of talk a little bit on there. And uh, yeah, so this series, I don't know very much about it. I'm not gonna lie, guys, the covers just looked awesome. Someone posted them on the Discord and I said, I don't know much about that. I read some reviews, and it sounded about, you know, something that I might like. So uh, there we go. I got to get the uh, the other two, but uh, getting the first one is obviously the best place to start to know if you want to read the series or not. So no plans at the moment. Like I said, I just kind of discovered this series uh, like a month or two ago. But uh, yeah, I added all those to my Amazon wish list because they looked really cool. And this one is from Madison, the moderator on my Discord and a patron. Uh, this is a graphic novel of H.P. Lovecraft's The Call of Cthulhu. Now, uh, something about this is I, I said I didn't even know that they made manga of H.P. Lovecraft. I didn't even know this existed, man. This is crazy cool. Uh, I was looking through some of the art. The art style is really kick-ass. So, yeah, uh, I, I you know, I reread I reread uh, Call of Cthulhu. God, I guess it was when I first did Fright Fest that first year. I don't know, when was that, like... Is that 2020? It might have been. The years are all kind of bleeding together now, and I reread Call of Cthulhu then. But uh, yeah, the cool visual medium with it. And I also got that illustrated edition. So uh, yeah, you can never have enough of our Lord and Savior from under the sea. Call of Cthulhu is a great, great story. And this is the best way for you know some people to consume it. I say go for it, right? But uh, thank you, Madison. It's really, really awesome. Next up, I got this handwritten letter. Actually, not handwritten, it's typed. But you know, I counted it as handwritten because uh, you know someone took the time to not email me and actually send me a letter. This is from Moyogo, and he's saying that this book, Harkwood's Voyage by Paul Kearney, he was saying it was a book that really didn't work for him. So he, his thought was, send it to me. Maybe I would like it more than he did, and sent me a, a nice, very nice letter. And I do appreciate that, Moyogo. I hope I'm saying your name right. But uh, he was he was very excited to uh, to send this to me, and uh, you know. Hey, I'm very excited to receive it. Thank you very much. Looks like it has been well loved. I've never, I've never heard of it, but uh, yeah, it's got a really cool cover. That's a good start. Good start. Another Matthew, who is obviously a fan of Cradle, sent me Cradle volumes two, three, four, and five. I know I said I was going to get to maybe trying some of these into my palate cleansers this year, and I still might. You know, this, the year is really, really early, but I'm not really sure. I mean, the guy is still putting these out. And I think he's putting them out like you know once three or four times a year i think like once every quarter or so so this guy is just uh he's just just racking them up but uh, i am not so again i don't know really what to say about the series except that i realize that the fandom is very very passionate about this series so now i have the first five because i already have uh volume one or number one it's not volume it's just number one right but uh yeah it's a series that like i said i really couldn't tell you too much about except that like every time i do a live stream comments are just about you got to read cradle so uh hey if you guys have any uh thing to add about cradle that's really cool but matthew thank you very very much and all i keep hearing a lot about lately is nick cutter and the troop i don't know if this is the book i've been hearing of but uh yeah it's 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 an author that just seems like uh, i i never heard of him for a minute and now it's like all i hear is about it's kind of like christopher buhlman it seems like it just kind of came out of nowhere same with this one but uh this was the one with a nice uh handwritten letter from uh, one of my patrons this is from jason and uh, saying that he thought that this would be something I like. Cool bookmark, too. But uh, again, Nick Cutter, don't really know much about the author, except that all of a sudden I think he is like a horror darling uh, in modern horror. So uh, again, any feedback you guys got, I'm willing to listen to it. But uh, yeah, this guy and Buhlman seem to be just kind of just completely exploded recently. And that's awesome. That's awesome because we need more voices, I think, in the horror community. So thank you, Jason. This one is from uh, Broku no Hero. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, he did message me on Instagram. But this was from him because it arrived without a note. This is called Black Clover a manga that I have yet to hear of. You guys see that? But uh, it's very, very shiny. But, you know, I'm... Look, guys, you try one manga, and people are going to recommend all kinds to you. I think this one 
and Claymore are two that have been recommended to me quite a bit recently. So uh, I, I do appreciate you thinking of me like this. Now, look, if guys, I get so many messages lately about when's the manga stuff come back. I don't know about like manga stuff. I've had three manga videos this entire run, so uh, I don't I don't know that I'm ever going to be like the manga channel. You know, I, I I think I still got so much stuff that I want to talk about. You know, written word, which is you know my primary interest. So I, I don't know. I will do those Berserk videos eventually. But uh, anything else, it's just it's going to be a while. It's going to be a long time. So you might be waiting a while. So, you know, if the day comes where I run out of content ideas, who knows? You know, these things might happen. But uh, uh, I do appreciate you thinking of me. Uh, no hero. This is from uh, Hot Flash Horror. Uh, I don't want to use her real name, but she sent me a really awesome letter. I do appreciate it. And your penmanship is awesome, by the way. Uh, but this is a book called The Cellar by Richard Lehman. And uh, basically, she told me it's got lots of blood and boobs. So, you know, hey, that's 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 my kind of horror, right? I mean, I, this, these are things I'm not going to pretend I don't like in my horror. But uh, I do appreciate the letter. That was very, very nice. She's uh, actually been uh, quite uh, frequently commenting on, on, on videos and stuff like that. So I, I, it's good to kind of, uh, you know, get a, a voice with the name now and stuff like that. So I, I do appreciate you thinking of me. And I've said recently, guys, I was going to be interested in reading some Robert McCammon but I had to go digital because I hadn't bought the books yet. Well, a fictional escapist, that is uh, the channel name. I'll link the channel below. But he sent me both a uh, swan song and a very well-loved copy of Boy's Life, which I have no problem with. A nice loved copy, guys. It looks great. It looks great. But uh, yeah, uh, these are some big boys, aren't they? Man, these are some monsters. So I, I actually think I'm going to be trying to do Boy's Life. I actually have it on the schedule sometime this summer, just depending on how some other things go. It's going to be post Malazan, and I think all I've got in like July, I think it's uh, all I've got is two of the Codex Alera books and then this. So I think that should be an exciting month. And people have told me, like everyone has been like, as much as you love Stephen King and Coming of Age, that is the perfect book for you. So I'm very excited to get into uh, that that series and uh, that author. And, and thank you very much, Fictional Escapist. That's really, really kind of you. A very, very kind gesture. Now I do have a couple of... Uh, uh, bigger things that I kind of want to talk about. Now, as you guys are aware, I've gotten some uh, Folio Society editions, and I don't think that Folio Society has ever made an unattractive book. They're all usually pretty, pretty, pretty nice, right? I got sent three of them this month, and uh, yeah, I can't say enough about them. First one is from my good friend Sarah from Sarah Reads. We've actually talked on the channel before. We had a talk about nothing recently. And she actually uh, messaged me and said, sorry to spoil the surprise. I just want to make sure you didn't have it. This is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. This is my third copy of this book, but my first of the Folio Society editions. And stars, it's very, very cool. Uh, but yeah, guys, I mean, it's one of my favorite uh, science fiction books of all time. And now to have it with this beautiful illustrated copy. Sarah is so nice. Thank you so much. I love it. I love it. I cannot wait, and I will not be getting rid of any of my copies of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy because I plan to have 42 of them eventually. It's going to get in there. I know it's going to get in there eventually, right? See? See, this is what happens when you do these live, guys. There he goes. <laughs> Next up, this is from Dalton, one of my patrons, and has been one of the kindest people I think I've ever met. He already sent me the book of the new son, on Folio Society, which as you know is not cheap, and but it is gorgeous. It's absolutely stunning. So he follows that up by sending me one of Misery by my favorite author of all time. This is, of course, Mr. Stephen King. So you got one from Misery. And again, their art just kicks, just kicks ass. It's just, there's just home runs every single time. Uh, but the other one is one that I have obviously eyeballed for quite some time never been quite able to pull the trigger and it's just like when i actually opened the box and saw this like my jaw actually dropped on the ground i could not believe that dalton had done this and this is the kindest thing i think it, I, I just it's unreal it's unreal that <laughs> that someone sent this to me this is george R. R. martin's a game of thrones book one and a song of ice and fire and obviously guys one of the nicest collections on all of Folio Society. It is so good, guys. If you are a Song of Ice and Fire fan, which I think most people on this channel would be, this is just amazing. This stuff, I mean, this is just the fold-out map. I don't want to do it here because it's very, very big. Uh, I want to have that framed. And then, of course, your two volumes for each book, which are just... I'm sorry, one volume for each... <laughs> two volumes for each book. Yes, like I said. Because uh, they, they are one for... Uh, I think they are... 
think they've got the first four out now. So yeah, these will be slowly collected over the years. But this, guys, is just magnificent if you are into that series at all. This is just... I don't even know what to say. I actually uh, showed this uh, when I was on my last patron Zoom call. I did like an unboxing for them because they couldn't believe that someone sent this to me. And it's it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's like the type that like you don't even want to read from it because it's so stunning. You know, I said that about the Dune one, but I read I reread Dune this year and I did read it uh, from the Folio Society edition. So just make sure you wear like uh, you know gloves or something. White Walkers, White Walkers. Yeah. So. Dalton, thank you so much. This is incredibly amazing of you. And I do not know what I did to earn such favor, but I am so glad to have you as a friend. Thank you so much. I do have a couple of notes here, handwritten notes. Uh, just that I get, do I have a PO box, guys? You can't just send me letters if you want to. And I love me a good handwritten note. Anthony wrote me a nice note, and I do appreciate the kind things that he said. I won't read them to you here because I like to keep some of these things private. But I do appreciate the, the kind words and the thoughts. It is very, very cool. And this one is from Corinne. And Corinne, again, wonderful penmanship. You guys you guys have such nice handwriting. It made me feel like just uneducated swine with how bad my handwriting is. It seems like the more that we get into like everything being electronic, the worse my handwriting has gotten. That's just so disappointing. But a, a very, very awesome letter from her and very, very nice thing she said. And the thing about this is that she, she drew me, a hand drew me a picture and she said she was like kind of embarrassed of it. Didn't even know she was going to send it. This is great. Thank you so much. This is gorgeous. What's not to like? Who doesn't like a nice drawing of a dragon? I think I'm going to put this with my Aragon books. It just feels like it would go with the Aragon book. But uh, yeah, that's just, again, someone's thinking about you enough that they're going to draw you a picture, write you a letter, and send it via snail mail. Very, very good stuff. So guys, that pretty much was my month. A little shorter than usual because, like I said, didn't buy anything myself this month. But uh, it was a very, very fun month, of course. And um, I, I, another thing about that, guys, you realize that when you're out of shelf space, eh, you kind of slow down a little bit <laughs> on what you're buying for yourself. But there are a couple of things I'm eyeballing. I, I do know I do have that new Sun Eater book, the physical version, coming uh, from Mr. Rocchio from Quail Ridge, which you can pre-order now, by the way, if you want to. And uh, Christopher signs all of his stuff. And I do encourage you guys to read that series. So uh, March is supposed to be pretty exciting. But, uh, you know, before we get there, we got to talk about the books that I get in February. And we'll talk about that next month. So, guys... Anything you added to your home library this month that you want to talk about below, drop in the comments and let me know, and I will talk to you there.